This is the Venganex Super Light AK from Shiftall. Always be careful with the name. This thing is currently the highest resolution PC VR headset on the market today. To be honest, I've never seen anything quite like it as the visuals are absolutely out of this world. But hey, let's post the hype train because here I have to be super frank and super honest. I actually have this thing over here from around a month and I just start to feel confident talking about it just right now. Yesterday night, in fact, I had my first complete play session with it. It took a month. It's quite telling. So what is this headset? What is the situation over here? One day I love it, one day I hate it, and there's no real in between. So let's go through this video with no hype, just raw impressions. I'm gonna tell you what I really love, what I really can't bear and don't understand, and uh, what... Uh, it's in the middle. So yeah, these are my first, not really first impressions with the Megan X AK Superlight. Let's get into it. All right, and this part is uh, for uh, Shift Doll. If you guys are actually watching, I might be super critical in this video, uh, but it's actually because I really want to love this headset. It has so much potential and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. All right, so if it's your first time seeing this thing, uh, I'm gonna go through a very quick unboxing. Uh, I'm actually not gonna throw every single thing in the box because uh, it's everything you need beside, of course, the lighthouses from SteamVR to actually use the tracking and a pair of controllers. Is that what you wanna use with this headset? Shiftall actually sells two different pairs of controllers that you can buy from them directly, but also the index controllers are gonna be compatible as this headset is based on SteamVR. But yeah, the unboxing experience is a really a throwback to those very old headsets where you get a lot of things and you really need to follow the instructions to actually understand how to make it work as uh, you always have to put everything together including the strap and including some screws. But of course, we can't avoid talking about the fact that this thing is super small indeed. It's actually comparable to the size of a smartphone, even smaller than that. And uh, on that, we have like the two pancake lenses uh, with under that, the two micro OLED displays. And, yeah, look at this thing, it's just extra tiny. Also, this might be one of the last times uh, you see the original strap on it because I think it's just completely inadequate for uh, the price point and the kind of headset that we have over here. And that was one of the big reasons why they just couldn't find a way to actually use it reliably. But yeah, we put it all together. It has this prototype like industrial kind of design uh, that I kind of dig. And also it just looks like a scuba diving mask. It might be the pixelation, but it really reminds me on the intro of a Metal Gear Solid 1. This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? All right, here we are with it, with a new strap, a new pretty much everything. Because I wanna talk to you about my big gripes with it, my minor gripes, and what really amazed me about this headset over here. But let's start with the amazing stuff, shall we? Let's be positive here. We saw it already in my True Lenses video, but this thing is absolutely the king of clarity right now when it comes to PC VR. It has two pancake lenses, custom made, of course, paired with two micro OLED displays with a resolution of 3552 by 3880. That is absolutely incredibly high. So there's no screen door effect whatsoever, like it's something that you don't see anymore. The lens is why they don't have the biggest eye box, so the sweet spot is uh, very high. You just have a band of a uh, little distortion. But overall, it's the most realistic image that you can get in VR, also because uh, we're going directly to the PC with no compression and anything. And also, this is achieved at 90 Hz, so you can get the full resolution at 90 Hz, something that other competitors can't actually do. But I really hope that they're gonna introduce a 72 Hz as well in the future, as it might be easier for our PCs to run it. Because yeah, this thing doesn't have eye tracking, it doesn't have a full VR rendering, so it means that it renders just everything at once. And uh, yeah, VR can be heavy, games in VR can be even heavier. It can be a struggle to reach 
high resolutions, even with the 4090 that I have. But I can stress about this enough. This, when you're in the right spot on the lenses, looks absolutely incredible with an asterisk. And if they fix the, like, the other stuff as well, it, it will be really hard to resist. I'm gonna be honest, I also love the flip up display function on this thing. Uh, you just click here and it goes up and it's absolutely fantastic. And you're gonna have to do it quite a lot over here. <laughs> And yeah, of course, this thing is freaking tiny. This is the deluxe audio strap, and this is the headset itself, and uh, and that is crazy. And also, while the softer part will be in my gripes as well, uh, well, I really love all the customization that they let us do with it. You can change saturation, uh, you can change the brightness, you can change the contrast, uh, you can change the color temperature, the, like everything. And it's just amazing, I love to have control this control over my headsets because they make it feel more mine. And there's something that all manufacturers actually should do instead of just sticking to what they want you to show. But yeah, it's time to talk about the gripes. And let's start with the software because this thing is completely inadequate for the headset. As we said, it's very nice to have all these customizations, to have all the possibility to change what we want. But the particular thing with this thing is that when you wanna play, 50% of the time, it won't start uh, in one play. You're gonna have to troubleshoot something uh, because maybe the screen doesn't want to turn on. Maybe uh, the screen turns off automatically. There's always something happening and that's the main reason why it was so hard to actually make this video to start with because I couldn't just have it reliably working and have it just enjoy it for once. In fact, like I'm pretty sure that I start SteamVR right now 50-50 will not work. Shall we try? It's connected and everything. Oh, by the way, over here, the super light AK is, um, is on green. So let me show you. Here we go, this is my headset. This is SteamVR. I actually loaded a different driver. We're gonna talk about it later because it works better. And uh, let's see if it works. Oh yeah, it does work, amazing. Hey, come on, dude. <laughs> I'm not joking, this is what I just got. It's like a perfect 50-50 split, let's say. <laughs> I really thought it was working for a second. But yeah, this is the thing. To their defense, they keep like updating the headsets and the software to make it work better. Another minor gripe are actually the diopters. So you're able to change uh, the diopters to actually match your eye prescription if you have myopia, and that's pretty good indeed. The problem though is that they don't have a zero, uh, so it's very hard to figure out where you're landing. So yeah, most of the time we're just trying moving them and trying to figure out where is the spot where your focus is landing better, and I don't think that's really good for your eyes as well if you land off the front one. So yeah, I understand why many manufacturers don't actually add diopters. It would be so much better to just have inserts for prescription that, by the way, uh, you can get from their website as well. And then we have to talk about the FOV because uh, this is not the largest, it's actually one of the smallest that we have in VR. It's kind of okay because we have so much clarity that uh, you kind of forget about it, but if you have a low IPD, uh, it can feel a bit claustrophobic. I'm 66.5, uh, so things get a bit better. Uh, I was able to eat around 94, 96, pushing it in. But it also really depends on the strap that you're using and how you're putting on your face. And also we have to talk about this three meters cable that is just uh, hilarious that uh, they will ship a VR headset made for social VR and to actually move around as it's advertised with a three meter cable where you can barely stand in the middle of the room. And just to put it in perspective, like my PC, is over here and my simulator is back there. This is the only headset with which I can't reach it. And the problem is that this is probably the best headset I have to use for simulators and yet it's very hard to use. I was able to use some extension cords for the display ports and the USB, uh, but again, they don't work reliably. So 
Uh, sometimes they work, sometimes not, sometimes uh, they just don't even boot the headset. It's something I can't suggest just yet. They sell a five meters cable on their website, but I think it should just be included in the box instead of going for a three meters one. That doesn't really make sense. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the bad one. Barrel distortion and chromatic aberration. These are two things that actually make this headset barely usable. So when you get this headset in with the original software, uh, the distortion profile is just bad. You don't get the best clarity possible and that's uh, kind of crazy considering this resolution. And at the same time, you have a lot of barrel distortion. So the world will shift around you when you actually look around you. Something that we had back in the days with the, uh, the Gear VR, and, and it's crazy that we're still seeing some headset with this kind of distortion today. I already used VR from the very beginning. I have very big VR legs, and uh, I actually got vertigo using this headset. And it, it's kind of crazy, it shouldn't happen at all. But I'm gonna put another asterisk over here when we're gonna talk about it. And the other big gripe is actually comfort. Uh, again, uh, the strap it comes with is completely inadequate because uh, the eye box is not very big, so you really need to find the right spot on the lenses to actually see everything clear. And the strap it comes with is just too flimsy uh, to actually do it. I think that it is a nice thing to have the flip up, it's a nice thing to think about the Halo style design if you kind of like it, where the headset will not actually lay on your face, but it will just float in front of it to enhance comfort in some cases. So it, it's surely a choice. The problem is that usually this thing needs an arch strap to create stability, because if not, this thing in every single movement will just move around your face. And with these lenses, they have a small eye box. It's very, very hard to actually just see. Properly. Gotta give prompts where it's due though, because uh, these straps has every single like way to delve in uh, the position that you want. But the strap itself is not good, and that's why now we're getting to the fixes. How this thing actually came back to be something that I like and I want to talk about. And this thanks to mostly three big heroes in the Shiftall uh, community on Discord. Their name are S Boys 3, that actually created the driver to change the distortion profile, actually gives the full clarity with this thing and also doesn't require anymore to use the Mega Next software, you get recognized directly from Steam VR. And that is a life changing thing, like uh, it's just changed completely the way I see this headset. Also because it takes rid most of uh, the barrel distortion as well, so makes it completely usable. Not perfect yet, but this is the first version and it's crazy that just a person was able to make a better job than the, the company creating the headset. Hopefully they will hire him or like pay him and, and make it integrate in the software because that's something that we really need. This headset should be used without its driver. And that's one of the asterisks going away. The other two are Atomic Rooster and Akari. They're actually working on creating straps for this headset, one is to actually remove the halo strap so you can actually have the headset laying on your face like a regular VR headset to enhance, of course, stability, but also all the different attachments to actually attach a proper strap to it, like the Deluxe Audio Strap. This is the best thing ever created for the VR community, by the way, uh, that also adds audio, uh, that it's pretty cool. So in this way, you can actually use the thing reliably and it's not just about comfort, it's not just about how it feels on your head, but it's also about how easily you can find the sweet spot, how easy you can find the right spot on the lenses to actually see everything clearly and start to enjoy this headset without all the distortions and all the problems that it can give if it's not worn in the right way. So yeah, this is the situation right now. Is this a full review uh, for this headset? No, absolutely no. I'm confident that Shiftall is actually working very hard uh, to make this thing work in the right way. We, they also have different accessories, so uh, they have to think about different things uh, for this headset. But I hope that they're gonna start considering actually shipping with a longer cable in the box because that's absolutely needed and also start to consider a better strap. Uh, if they want to do the Halo style design, hopefully they're gonna also do the regular strap that I know they're working on and I hope they're gonna just put it in the box and a choice so one uh, can have the floating one or uh, the one to have better stability because it's something that I will for sure recommend to have 
and it's right now, it's barely usable out of the box. But yeah, talking about why I'm still positive about this headset, uh, even with all these gripes, with all its their problems, is that yesterday just playing Elite Dangerous with it was a dream. Uh, like, space looks incredible, resolution is extra high, everything looks extra clean. Uh, if you get in the right position, it's just comfortable on the eyes the entire time and you forget to have a headset. And that's what VR should be. Just get in the game, getting completely immersed and don't think about what you have on your face. And I think that with this resolution, with this kind of lenses, we're getting very, 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 very close to it. And uh, with this kind of footprint where the headset is so small that you forget about it, but we still have to solve these little small gripes to have perfection. And if now it's just through some Discord heroes is okay, uh, but hopefully we're gonna start to get these headsets directly as they should be and I really look forward to it. Also because this thing is pretty expensive, is $1,900. Expectations are high and they need to be, and uh, we need to be clear about it. But if you guys from Shiftal are actually looking, I love this headset, please keep working on it. It really deserves it because there's a diamond in there. I see you soon, thanks.